This video will demonstrate a technique of a robotic sacral corpopexy that is exactly modeled after the open technique. With the use of a zero degree scope, the sigmoid colon is retracted laterally using the Cartier forceps and the right ureter is identified. The peritoneum overlying the sacral promontory is elevated and is opened using monopolar cautery. The fat pad overlying the anterior longitudinal ligament is exposed and is gently dissected away. The middle sacral artery is frequently visualized and can be coagulated using the PK dissector if necessary. A retroperitoneal tunnel is then made from the promontory to the cul-de-sac along the right paracolic gutter. This tunnel facilitates the mesh lying flat along the sacrum and reduces the amount of peritoneum that is closed at the termination of the procedure. With the vagina deviated anteriorly and the rectum posteriorly using EEA sizers that are placed into the vagina and the rectum respectively, the rectovaginal space is easily identified and the peritoneal incision is extended transversely in the shape of a T to expose the entire posterior vaginal wall. If indicated, the rectovaginal space can be dissected all the way down to the level of the perineal body. The vagina is then deviated posteriorly to facilitate dissection of the bladder from the anterior vaginal wall using monopolar cautery. The mesh graft is introduced through the accessory port. The bladder is retracted using the fourth arm and the anterior mesh arm is placed over the anterior vaginal wall and is sutured in place using 2O Gore-Tex sutures on CT2 needles that are each cut to 6 inches long. It is most efficient to anchor the two distal corners first and then place a series of interrupted stitches towards the vaginal apex. Knots are tied using two surgeon's knots followed by two half hitches. An attempt is made to achieve healthy bites through the vaginal muscularis without perforating the epithelium. After adequately securing the anterior mesh arm, the vagina is deviated anteriorly and the posterior mesh arm is draped over the posterior vaginal wall with the assistance of the fourth robotic arm, which can hold upward traction on the sacral end of the mesh graft. Starting at the vaginal apex, six to eight interrupted sutures are placed to secure the mesh to the posterior vaginal wall. If necessary, the zero degree scope can be exchanged for a 30 degree up scope to fully visualize the rectovaginal space. The vagina is then deviated towards the sacrum and the sacral arm of the mesh graft is pulled through the retroperitoneal tunnel up to the level of the sacral promontory. Great care is taken to not over suspend the vagina. The vaginal assistant removes the EEA sizer and can ensure that no undue tension exists at the vaginal apex. The sacral portion of the mesh graft is sutured to the anterior longitudinal ligament at the promontory using two or three interrupted sutures. When placing the needle during this critical juncture, it is important to rotate through the ligament along the curvature of the needle as opposed to driving the needle forward and potentially exiting further laterally than expected. Because of slight traction that exists on the mesh, a slip knot is preferred over a surgeon's knot. Care is taken to visualize the middle sacral artery and either suture around or cauterize it. The mesh is then extraperitonealized using a 2O vicral suture cut to 6 inches long. It is easiest to accomplish this task starting at the vaginal apex and suturing towards the sacral promontory.